All right. Um, Mary Beth and I have a brother that uh, some of you were able to join with us and praying for him and his surgery. He was going into the hospital and expecting to have a stent put in, but uh, they got in and figured out he needed a quadruple bypass heart surgery. Now, I don't know what the medical things are doing these days, but that was kind of like, he only got five years after that, usually as a, a condition of the quadruple bypass. But he was up on the side of his bed the next day and they're, they're, he's back home now. I got a chance to talk to him, see how he was doing. And he does send his thanks for everybody's prayers for him. He's, he's a Christian. He took the PFL class when he was about 15, 16 years yeah. old. He came up to visit me in New Knoxville and took the PFL class. But uh, he's been a wonderful believer since then. But um, <laughs> uh, when you think about that kind of thing, what could he have done earlier to make that better? And of course, most of us have no idea that those kind of problems are developing until somebody says, hey, you don't get it taken care of, you're going to have some problems. So, but the thing is, is that we don't know what sometimes the condition of our heart is. And, but the thing is for all of us is that if we are not paying attention to what we're putting into our mouth or perhaps drinking or smoking or those kind of things, uh, it has effects, it has effects on us. And uh, the thing that we have to ask ourselves sometimes is what condition is our heart in? Now, I'm not talking about the physical heart because I'm, I have no expertise in that, but I'm talking about our soul life. Uh, the, uh, the, the heart of our personal being, uh, that which we have all of our beliefs systems are in, described as our heart. What do you really believe? And so, the heart can be, is a, is a finicky thing. And I'd like to take you to some scriptures to put, make my point. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 5. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Jeremiah was a great prophet, and he wrote down some really great stuff that uh, we are familiar with you know we, we take these verses and sometimes we see a really bang bang up verse and we go oh that's great stuff and this is uh, one of those areas and starting in verse 5 of chapter 17 it says thus saith the lord cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the lord uh, that cursing is there's consequences to actions and it isn't like he's especially picking up somebody to curse mm -hmm. but the, the issue is what are we doing in our life that brings consequences both blessings and cursings are the consequences of what we do and how we live our life especially in the Old Testament especially in the Old Testament, before they had a whole lot of grace. Verse 6, For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall in, inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Especially want to focus in on and shall not see when good cometh. Hmm. When our heart is in the wrong place, we don't see when the good's coming, we can't recognize it. Hmm. It's kind of like Jesus Christ could walk right up to somebody, but if they have the wrong heart attitude, they would reject him. And did that happen during Jesus Christ's ministry? Absolutely, time and time again. 
the Pharisees were supposed to be the most religious people. They're the ones that studied uh, the scriptures the most of anybody. And they were supposed to be the experts that the people could lean on and rely upon to give them what the truth of the word was. But their heart was so hardened that when Jesus Christ came with love and grace and, and shared the word with them, they not only rejected him, they wanted to kill him. So the heart, uh, is, uh, we can't trust in men. We can't trust in men because men will be uh, self-serving. They are not, if they have the wrong attitude of heart, they will be serving themselves and not God and his people. Let's read on. In contrast, blessed are the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. So where should our focus be? On the Lord. And of course, the words of the Lord. Because... If it's not the words of the Lord that we're focusing in on, it's just your imagination. It's, it's what, how you picture God. And is he a long-bearded, older gentleman sitting on a big white throne someplace? Or is he as he has described himself in the word? It is how he describes himself in the word is how we need to be focusing. Mm -hmm. And it says, that person who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Now, that's in contrast to being a dearth and salty place where nothing's growing, right? <laughs> this is the contrast. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. Now, that's in contrast of not being able to see good coming, right? Now... When you are like this, when your heart is right with God, then you don't even see the parched and dry times. It doesn't affect you like it does everybody else. For her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cause uh, from yielding fruit. Now, we all had read this verse before. But let's look at the next one. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, have you ever heard uh, the term, well, you just got to follow your heart? Well, if this true is true, you can follow your heart right into the grave. Okay? Because your heart is something that is continually able to change. You can change your heart. And when you include God in that process, it can be supercharged to change. And that's a great hope. That is a wonderful thing to, to realize about ourselves. Sometimes we think, well, if, if I'm thinking it, that's who I am. Not really. You're thinking it because of where your heart has been. If your heart is full of fear, guess what your thoughts are going to be on? Being fearful. If your heart is angry towards somebody and bitter towards somebody, guess where your thoughts are going to be? Every time that, name, that person's name is mentioned, you get angry. You get heated up. See, those are the kind of thoughts that are coming from our heart. And it talks about uh, out of the heart, bad things come out of the mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, things are coming out of your mouth because of what you're thinking. But the root of it is the problem of the heart. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to describe heart as that is, is kind of like the settling place of our thoughts. The more you think about something, the more mm -hmm. something gets settled and planted in your heart. Okay, you got to work at it. <laughs> But just as it gets bad things in it, it, those bad things can be rooted out with the things and the thoughts of God. But it all takes effort. Yeah. It doesn't happen when you're passive about it. You can be passive and say bitter a lifetime. It's when you address it with positive thoughts 
thoughts that are in God's word is when things start to change. And look at verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, ser Lord search the heart. He knows what's in there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. We, don't, we can't fool God. No, we could go to church and, and say prayers in the pews a lot. But if our heart's wrong, he knows it. Mm -hmm. I try the reins. And the reins is another word for that innermost part of our, our heart. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So we're not fooling God. In anything that we do or think. So, who are we fooling? Sometimes we fool ourselves. We fool ourselves because we think we're, we're doing just great. When we desire to have what God has warned us to avoid, we will be entrapped. There's lots of things that God says is available to us, and He also has some nice warnings for us too, to stay, things to stay away from. And we need to pay attention to those. Let's go to Proverbs 14, verse seven. Proverbs 14, verse seven. Now, my brother is going to be going through a lot of changes in his life. That was a pretty good wake up call for He's got to change his eating habits. He's got to change exercise habits. All the things that he had gotten into a, a routine and a habit of not doing right. But now the doctors are going to prescribe certain ways of his lifestyle change that needs to happen if he wants to live. And he, he, he's fully aware of this and he's fully on board with it. Yeah, really good for him. So in Proverbs 14, verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man. And for my brother, it would be donuts, cake, yeah. pop, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So for the, the spiritual person, go from the presence of a foolish man. Guess what happens? When you're around foolish people, you listen to them. You're filling your thoughts with the things that they're saying. And uh, the same thing could be said about TV and all those kind of things. If you're not listening to what is going on with a spiritual mind, you can absorb those things and not even realize it. When thou perceiveth not in him the lips of knowledge. So you don't know what he's talking about. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his ways. But the folly of fools is deceit. We're fooling ourselves. That's the folly of a fool, is that we deceive ourselves. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor or grace. Isn't that great? Proverbs are great for making contrasts. This or that. And you can see that pattern over and over again. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not uh, intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Yeah. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You're going to be talking to a lot of people once you become a Christian and know what the word of God says that are just going to be like beating your head against a stone wall. But remember, it's not you working with them. You give them things to think about and then let God work on their hearts. And sometimes it'll happen like that. Because God has already been at work within them, preparing them. And sometimes it might take some time. But the thing is, that it's, it's not us. It's not the word that you're saying to them. It's where their heart is at at any moment. 
Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. See, they're being deceived about, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> you know. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. This is a continual process of living. Each day we are preparing or hardening our hearts to receive the word of God. Every day. And that includes you and me. Because we can have a real good tender heart towards God's word now. But if we don't continue to be a good gardener. Who knows what I'm going to be like in a year or five years. Do you see? <laughs> I, I was listening to one really good preacher, uh, Dr. Earl, I listened to his teaching. He says, don't tell me you'll be standing with the ministry forever. Nobody can say where they'll be at in five years. Today. <laughs> but today, today I can say, God and I, we're doing it. We're making <laughs> it. Let's go to Matthew 13. It's one of the great examples of a man's heart and how they receive the word. Matthew 13, verse 3. It starts out that Jesus is, uh, again, giving many parables. He, he taught a lot by parables. And in the parables, if you had a heart to know and to receive it, yeah, you sure. saw it. But if you're like the Pharisees, it's going, uh, what, the, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? <clears throat> and he spake many parables unto them, many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, for them, everybody had a mind picture of what that was, because agriculture was a big thing. And all you had to do was walk outside the city limits, and there was fields everywhere. And they would see sowers sowing, and uh, they didn't have uh, machines to do that. Okay, they had a buck or a bag of seeds strapped to them, and they take their hand in it, and then they spread it. They walk a little further, and they spread it, and that's how they would sow their the, all the different crops that they did. Unless it was vegetable crops, and I think they would put it in. But the general, you know, the the, the big crops, they'd have to do that with. So this immediately put that in mind. Okay, everybody understood what he was talking about. <laughs> and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the way, the by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, that's outside of the tilled ground. Okay, hard packed. And the seeds would be landing on top, and the birds would go, easy pickings. Right? Fly down, pick them up. <clears throat> And devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no depthness of earth. So they got a nice little start, but they couldn't go very far because they would, the roots couldn't sink down. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And I got some places in my yard like that. <laughs> you know, they, they just got not, didn't they get very much water last summer? And it just browned out. No matter how much water I threw out after that, it didn't come back. But the point is, is it needs root. It needs depth. So somebody who just hears the word, and gets glad about it and has no depth in them. Don't, they don't put anything else into it, of themselves into it with their time, their studies and all these things. They're not developing, they're developing a root. Verse seven, and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. So we've all see, seen what a field looks like that's full of weeds. You know, it just chokes them out. <clears throat> 
but other fell on good ground. Now, what is good ground? Okay. Is that ground that is prepared for the seeds? Okay. You just can't go out in an empty field and start throwing seeds and expect to get a crop. You got to spend some time preparing, toil, uh, turning it over, making sure that the soil is in small enough pieces that the seeds can be protected and grown. So, some fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now, in the agricultural world, how, why would you have those different yields? It's because of the fertilizer or the, the richness of the soil. Okay. But the point is, is that because the farmer had prepared the ground ahead of time, it's still producing. Mm. It's still producing. It says, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, people, the, the Pharisees and stuff like that, they've gone away. And the disciples came and said to him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Why? It isn't God's making a distinction. It's where the heart has been. Where is their hearts? So if you have a heart to receive, then the word that God is giving will take root. For whosoever hath, to him shall it be given. And whosoever hath of more abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. And remember, we're talking about the heart here. This is the, the, the subject of this parable, is where we have prepared our heart or not. So if we are already having a good abundance of spiritual understanding, guess what? More comes. But if we don't have an abundance of spiritual understanding and we don't put the effort in to make that, then it drifts away. It drifts away. And believe me, I, I, I know plenty of people, and myself included, that I've had great times of spiritual understanding and closeness with the Father, and times when I didn't pay attention to that, and it just got real darn quiet. Mm -hmm. Where the voice of the Lord was not near as pronounced to me, and I'm wondering why everything in my life is going wrong. But it's because I wasn't paying attention. All right. What verse was I in? 13. Thank you. Wherefore speak I unto them in parables, because they see, seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing he shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing, you shall see, and shall not perceive. Remember, the parable is about seed, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about seeing and hearing. It's because that's how we change our hearts. That's, the, that's how the seed comes to us. We aren't, it isn't a bunch of seeds that we're taking in through our mouth. It's what we are seeing and hearing. People saw Jesus Christ's miracles. Multitudes were healed. Yet they believed not. <laughs> they saw, they heard, and they had no understanding. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted. And should, and I should heal them. Whose decision was it to close the eyes? Their decision. Mm -hmm. They're the one that chose to do it. But blessed are your eyes, for they shall see, and your ears, for they shall hear. For barely I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men 
and desire to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. We, we are at the most blessed time in history right now. We are living in the age of grace. <laughs> this is what the people of all times was looking for. They were looking for the coming of the, the Messiah, the Savior. He came to give us this time. But not just this time. It's what comes next, even. It just keeps getting better and better and better. But we, for a people, now have the ability to walk by the Spirit. Every one of us, not just certain prophets or men of God who did such a tremendous job in the past, but you and I can walk by the Spirit that God gave within us. It may have been going on for 2,000 years, but believe me, the adversary is real good at talking people out of it. You now have enough word in your life and understanding to walk real big for God. Verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then come the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receive the seed in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon, or by and by, with joy receive it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but during, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Mm. Oh, well, my friends and my family don't like what I'm, what I'm telling them or what I believe. So I'm not going to believe it anymore. Well, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Well, guess what? The word dies within you. Mm. 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. He doesn't produce those hundred, sixty, or thirty fold. He just lets the, 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 the temptations of the world the riches of the world, all the things that the world promises. That's what he goes for now. And when, when that becomes the number one priority, the word dies. But he that receives seed unto the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also bear fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Should we be thankful for the 30? Absolutely. 60? Yes, sir. 100? Well, you're about maxed out. <laughs> so, the question is, how is your heart doing? Well, I would say if you're here today and listening to this, it's in pretty good shape. <laughs> it's in pretty good shape. You're, you're tilling the soil. You're Now, here's what the... And I talked to Mike Tracy about this, and he kind of opened my eyes to this, is that it doesn't say that the sower goes and chases the birds away or cuts down the thorns or uh, throws out the rocks. The sower sows the seed. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to the person how he receives it. Because you can't change people. You can't. Either hungry or they're not hungry. So, Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. And thanks for giving us such wonderful seed to, to grow in our lives. I thank you that your son, Jesus Christ, was the greatest sower in the world. Thank you that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. 
and that as we stand on your word, and do it fearlessly, then you will open great doors to us of utterance and abundance and all the other things that you promised to your kids. So we thank you for that in your son's name. Amen.